Okay. Um, I want to dive in a little bit more on my situation. I have been posting some things on TikTok, Twitter. It's been easier to do it that way because in shorter stints, it, it's just easier to get my thoughts out there. It's hard to line everything up and create a timeline and stay on track and not talk in circles because there are so many things that connect and it's really messy it's really gross and honestly even living through it there's stuff that's coming out today that is as an adult horrifying to me because i want to create some perspective for you guys i am a 27 year old man and when this all started happening i this was like over 10 years ago so i was 15 17 range i have no reason, have no interest, have no desire. There is no part of me that wants a relationship, a friendship, anything with someone 10 years younger than me. I understand having fans and I understand your content catering to a younger audience that's fine, but if we want to talk about boundaries, Joshua David Evans, let's talk about boundaries, shall we? Because when I first met you guys in person at this point, we had, you know, been tiny chatting, um, which is essentially Zoom, but like big group chats. We had been doing that. Um, Twitter, Skype, you name it. But when I had finally met you guys in New York, <sighs> why is it that I don't know boundaries, Josh, but you were the one to sign this crown with Colleen and Miranda, and then you not only signed it, but you continued to open it up and write in it. And when I opened it, I'm not gonna show the whole thing, but that looks like a phone number to me. That's your phone number from 2012 at least. Why did you give a 16 year old your phone number and then why are you in my DMs on Thursday morning telling me I didn't understand boundaries? That's strange. Um, because after New York, that was just the beginning of things. I started getting invited to shows. I started getting asked to do little YouTube collaborations here and there. I had my own channel that I was aspiring to grow. And you always told me that I was like a brother to you and that if you ever made it big, you were gonna take me with you and all sorts of nonsense like that. I eventually had run accounts for characters for you that you asked me to run as a minor, not paid. And, and don't act like you didn't really care about these accounts. This account didn't really mean anything to you because I know damn well how much you love attention and you ate that up. Your friends ate that up. People in your circle told me how much you all ate that up. The reason you gave me access to that account, which it seems like you forgot, um, is because a mutual friend at the time, you thought they were running an account that was created before the official Sarah Ridiculous account. That was the character that Josh created. Her name was Sarah Ridiculous, Dic and 
I thought it was funny. So <clears throat> I created a fake account for it and was making tweets that I thought Sarah would tweet. Josh, Colleen, they followed it. They egged it on. They encouraged it. Their friends did. People liked it. So he went to this mutual friend of ours because he thought they were running that and asked if they would like to run an official account. They declined because they said, it's not me, it's Johnny. And then he came to me <clears throat> asking if I'd run at Sarah Ridiculous on Twitter. He gave me access. He gave me the password, the username. He just said, you know, it's all you, dude. Um, and he just gave me complete access. He occasionally, I remember, would give, give me some feedback or he'd interact with the account and he'd tell me I was doing a good job. He'd butter me up, but I never received any payment for it. I, I just got words of affirmation and um, it was bullshit. And he had even went as far as to get my family involved. Um, he had developed friendships with my parents, my sister. Um, he felt very much like a family friend to us. And I think that's even why everything now just kind of waking up um, and realizing that he wasn't the only problem and and every person who plays a part in this story is equally at fault and um yeah i would like to read the dm that i was sent by josh keep in mind that my last dm to him was March 16th, 2015 at 6.22 p.m. Um, and I said, hey, I need to talk to you ASAP. He did not respond to that. And then I think that was around the time the divorce was happening. So in hindsight, don't expect him to respond to that. Like he's clearly going through real life shit. But that is the last interaction I ever had with this man this man i literally felt like was an older brother to me he just ghosted me he went ghost he the divorce was announced and he took me off of his channel i think i even tried to text him and say did i upset you like i'm sorry like i was apologizing and i got ignored I, I, I was just nothing. I was just totally disposable. That's how I was made to feel, at least. And the next time I heard from him is eight years later on Thursday. It says, <clears throat> Hey, Johnny, in the midst of what's happening, someone brought your tweets to my attention. I wanted to cut straight to the point and apologize. I won't ask you to keep anything private. You deserve closure and respect, which is something I don't think you ever received. I should have never said you could tweet for that Sarah account. I, should have, I shouldn't have let it manifest into something unhealthy for you. Letting you tweet for that stupid little Twitter account was nothing serious in my head. Never thought of it as a real thing. It was absolutely real for you though. You had your own exact replica version or i'm sorry version slash replica of that account that you made on your own and i thought it wasn't a huge deal to say you could take over i didn't want to spend more time on it myself simply because it felt like a fun hobby to me regardless it wasn't okay i didn't care about that account a lot so i was like cool man by all means go for it YouTube wasn't even my job then, and it doesn't excuse anything. As you know, my following got bigger, and I eventually abandoned it altogether. I stopped looking at it until someone mentioned you had tweeted that you were done with it. Genuinely, I didn't even think that you were still using it. I never asked for you to work for me, create a schedule, or even how to tweet from that account. I rarely even checked up on it. I understood now, or I understand now that 
it wasn't anything like that for you. I was naive and oblivious to what may have felt like, uh, or what, it, it, gosh, I can't read. I was naive and oblivious to what it may have all felt like to you. You were too young for me to have given you access. We spent time and had dinner with your family while I was working at the auto show. I loved hanging with your family. You clearly wanted a deeper connection and then I ghosted you. I didn't know how to tell you that I, uh, you shouldn't be waiting around after shows to say hey for a bit. It felt okay at first, but then became too much of a thing. For me, it felt innocent, but to you, you were too, <laughs> you were too young to understand boundaries. That was absolutely my responsibility. Instead of being straight up with you, I just slowly slipped away. I ghosted you because I didn't know how to tell you it was getting excessive. All of this feels clear to me now. I was in the wrong. You felt abandoned or disregarded. That's the honest truth. I never would have done it if I fully understood how it would end up. Your heart mattered then and instead, <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude, your heart mattered then, and instead of handling it head on, I thought you'd lose interest and move uh, to something else. That was incredibly wrong on my part. You were wrong, or geez, you were young and deserved transparency and protection. I straddled the fence on being like an internet big brother to you and also feeling like it was becoming unhealthy for your well being and development. This doesn't erase anything that you felt or went through. I thought you were a great kid. You seemed like a lot, a uh, lot like I was as a team or a teen. Okay, when anyone ever says that, that's like a red flag. You seemed like I was a lot like when I was a teen. One of my teachers said that to me who was a piece of shit and he's in jail now. So don't say that to people because it's not, like it doesn't make, no. So it felt okay to befriend you. It wasn't okay. I should have never interacted with you beyond some tweets and saying hi at meet and greets. You deserve a happy and healthy future, Johnny. I played a role in messing some of that up. My hope is that this apology helps you see you were never in the wrong. You wanted a friend, that's it. I gave you the illusion that I could be that friend, which at the time I genuinely thought I could be. Until I became, or, oh my god, this novel, I'm literally, my brain is melting. I gave you the illusion that I could be that friend, which at the time I genuinely thought I could be, until it, I began to realize the amount of attachment that you were feeling. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for not being upfront about why I ghosted you. I'm sorry for letting you take over that account. I'm sorry for never giving you the closure you needed. I was ignorant about how to navigate that dynamic. That wasn't your responsibility to figure out. It was mine. Wishing you nothing but the best, man. I hope you and your whole family are thriving and enjoying life. You each deserve it. I said, I can't say I'm surprised that you're in my DMs right now. I appreciate some of the self-awareness in your apology, but let me make this very clear. You did not know boundaries. I was a teenager and yes, I was extremely naive, but you're the one who sold me a fantasy you couldn't uphold. You just liked the attention. I was 16 when you gave me your phone number in New York City. I didn't even ask for it. I still have the crown you wrote it on. You looked me and my loved ones dead in the eyes at saying things like I was a brother to you, that if I ever made it big, we'd work together and you take me with you, etc. You gave me a hopeless teen at the time, all this false hope that you will, uh, all this false hope and you will forever be so wrong for that. I told you my dreams and you milked them for your own ego and benefit. My family tried to warn me about you all those years. You were a grown ass man. I was a child. I should have listened to them, but I looked up to you so much. Subtly insinuating that I was some obsessive weirdo fan who didn't know boundaries is fucked. Let me refresh your memory. You did ask me to run that account because you liked the account I was running prior to at Sarah Ridiculous. You asked, friend of ours, to run the official account um, that you created because you thought it was her running that OG one. Once she told me it was actually, uh, once she told you it was actually me, 
That's when you came to me and asked me to run it, so I did. Don't act like you didn't encourage it and egg me on. That, a stu that stupid account is the least of it. The reason I held on to it for so long is because I was trying to prove my worth to you. You seem to forget a lot of things you did and said to me, but I'll never forget. You would never hit me up to apologize if this shit uh, didn't start coming to light. You are just as guilty as the rest of them. You'll never understand the negative impact you've had on my life, let alone during some of my most vulnerable years. You used to literally say shit like, come to, the, uh, come to my show in California and insinuate that I'd be coming as a friend or guest. Then you would act shocked when me, someone who thought they were your friend, would come to California to see you. Shame on my naive self for believing the lies that were fed to me. And that's just one example. Why would you make promises to someone you had all these mixed feelings about? You were always giving broken promises and you never stopped. You say I felt abandoned and disregarded. I literally was. It's no feeling. It's just a fact. The day you removed my channel from yours after your divorce with Colleen was announced, I immediately woke up and realized you were full of shit the entire time. This is just damage control and I see right through it. I stayed silent for all these years to protect you and the rest, but you're all the same. Everything was always at the expense of my emotions. I'm just not buying what you're selling anymore. You guys chose uh, to act this way and now it's coming back to bite. I begged for closure and you never gave it to me. Eight years too fucking late. Woo! To be able to say that after almost a decade of wanting to say that, God, that felt good. And he responded. Oh, he responded. You know, let me just read it. It's another paragraph, but why not? We're here, right? Um, he said... Yep, you're absolutely right. I thought I'd done a lot of work on myself since getting sober. This is a new revelation that has shown me I didn't have a true grasp on how my emotions hurt people. Your anger is justified. Everything is justified. I don't want to backtrack. Backtrack. Let me try again. Wait. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I read some of this in anger, so some of it didn't all come to me. But he just said, I don't want to backtrack. Let me try again. You just... Okay. Okay. I did leave you without explaining. I was a coward. Gaining fame didn't, quote unquote fame, didn't prepare me for the dynamic between content creator and viewer. I thought engaging with fans was the right thing to do. I had only done theater and commercials up at that point, <laughs> where everything is separated. YouTube was interactive and I abused it while thinking it was okay. It wasn't okay. Again, you're right. I'm writing because I'm being bombarded by so many notifications. And then I found you. My heart dropped when I realized that I didn't make time to make anything better for you. I had never owned up or even tried to fully grasp it. I was intoxicated with my own story and pain. Okay, dude, yeah, I get you were in a, like, you were going through a divorce, but like, fuck off. Being so far away from it now shows how toxic it was. I was toxic. I get that now. More than I ever have. I felt like a victim, but I was creating victims along the way. I pulled you into it and realized it was my own fault for letting it go that far. The damage was done and I faded away from you, from my entire life at that point. I'm not asking for forgiveness. I don't deserve that. My only intention is to communicate that you are validated and you never deserved any of it. I, choose to, I chose to look the other way while you got hurt. I was naive, but by choice. I want you to do whatever you feel to... Wait, I want you to do whatever you feel you need to so you can heal. That's it. Um... You were and are right in all of this. I went along with things, tiptoeing the line of what was okay and not. Then I jumped ship. I didn't know how to deal with it. I was a coward. Josh, you didn't, you didn't go along with anything. You led the pack. You are the reason any of this happened. I was going along with you. Let's be clear on that. Again, that's it, man. I'm grieving my own mistakes, trying to be respectful and responsible in life after that world. I'm trying. You're hurting, and if you could do something to help 
if I could do something to help, I would. If there's anything I can do to help ease some of this anger or pain you feel, tell me or not. <sighs> Sometimes being angry and confident is all a person can do in a situation like this. You have every right to say those things, feel those things. Do not compare my situation to yours because what you did was malicious. What I'm doing is telling my story to protect people. The only person you were trying to protect was yourself. This does come too late, but I'll be damned if I just throw my hands up in the air again and pretend like it's uh, okay not to step in and apologize. I'm sorry, Johnny, I am. YouTube was only brought out the, YouTube has only brought out the worst in me. I see that now. I'm utterly and completely sorry for what I've done to your healing and well being. Hoping you'll start to find some kind of comfort in the days and weeks ahead. I just couldn't stay silent after finally starting to see what role I played. It's going to be a long road ahead for me um, to right my wrongs. I'm working through that. Apologizing to you is the least I could do to begin for everything. I'm sorry. And I left him on red and I ghosted him because I wanted him to see what it feels like to pour your heart out to somebody and have them not respond and not acknowledge it in the slightest. Because that, sir, is what you did to me for the last 10 fucking years of my life. Or I'm sorry, we haven't talked for, you know, how long ago was that? It's been a long fucking time. I'm just irritated. Like at this point, I'm mad because the fact that you thought that you could swoop in and do some weird damage control, the only reason you initiated that was because everybody else is under fire. I would have never heard from you ever again in my life. And I know you're probably watching this. I know all of you are probably watching this. And I, to some degree, am speaking to all of you. Because yeah, I touched on my situation with Josh primarily for this video. Because I think this is all I can handle right now. I'm gonna take a break. But that's just a little bit more into my situation with him. And that is just barely scratching the surface. So... Josh, uh, again, I appreciate some of your self-awareness and I truly, truly hope that you're in Georgia or wherever the fuck you are now trying to do better, but do better and stay out of my life, please, all of you. 